So we come to Soul Winning Lessons, number nine video, audio, uh, 23rd part. And we're looking at the public ministry and we're looking at soul winning. We left off last time. We're dealing with a person. We've come to the question, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? And if the answer is Jesus Christ, by the gospel, by the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ. The answer is correct. But if you get an answer other than Jesus, or as Paul tells us, another Jesus, now we begin our study into how to deal with lost men. Because when somebody comes up and we find out the answer is not Jesus Christ, we cannot foolishly, haphazardly leave them walking away thinking they're okay thinking they're right with god and they're not and might cause offense now if we don't have time that's a great time for a gospel trip but if there's time and you're knocking on the door you're dealing with someone one-on-one -on -one, we're going to further go on with these lessons about how to deal with them now we've done with conduct, but number 23, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So what happens? How are you going to heaven? And it's not Jesus. It's not religion. I don't know. My church, my baptism. Look how good I am. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, the Bible, what we just read, it's not the answer religion. It's not what you do. Salvation is a gift of God and it's not of our work. It is truly by faith. It is truly that of God. Now it says the gift of God and we can run over, if you like, Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. When we're going with the gifts, and you've got to start learning and memorizing and placing yourself in scriptures. Now, I'm going to look down a minute. I don't, yeah, I do have Romans 6 23. So, salvation is, you've got to explain to this person, it's by grace through faith. And again, it's a gift of God. Salvation is not done by man it is not of works religion process of works when we all get to heaven we're not going to brag on what we've done we're not going to brag on how well we did we're not going to say look how good my religion is that's not what the conduct in heaven is going to be it's going to be about the gift of god it's going to be all about god so when we run the romans 6 23 number 24 for the wages of sin is death now you can start explaining to what death is. For the wages of sin is death. You're going to die, right? And this is a question to ask him. That's how we started this conversation. If you were to die, do you know or how do you know you'll go to heaven? And we've got a wrong answer. So now what we can do is now, okay, so what is death? Not is the question now, are you going to go to heaven? But why do you die? For the wages of sin is death. Now we put sin on their account. And what is sin? All have sinned. All is sin. As much as the sodomite, as much as the bank robber, as somebody who lies. And the question may come, well, 
I'm too bad of a sinner, or what about this particular sin, or I did not kill anybody. And we got to realize that, okay, are you going to die? Well, yeah, well, then all sin, no matter what sin. We are born into sin. And our conduct and payment for sin is death. And then the Bible goes forth, but the gift of God, what we left off in Ephesians, the gift of God, remember we talked about that in Ephesians? I, I'm not like we're dealing with a guy. Galatians 2, 8 and 9. Okay, you remember the gift of God. So what is that gift of God that comes because we die? Is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we have man's condition. Man in his condition, death. God's response. He has a gift. And the gift of God's eternal life. Well, how do I get eternal life? My church. No, it's not my church. Well, I do. It's not you again. Galatians. Now you may have to go back to Galatians 2, 8 and 9 and hold your hand there in, in Romans and go back and say, listen, see, it's not a works. It's nothing. The only thing you can do to, to earn eternal salvation and eternal life is you got to die. You're doing that very well because you're a sinner. Now eternal life, spoken about by the Bible, is only through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And there's no works with it. So with Romans 6.23, is he a sinner? And that's a very important question we got to go. We must resolve the sinner that we're dealing with. In James 4.17, and everybody's good, and every situation is going to be different. I'm laying out a foundation, a basis. Not everybody's going to come spring in with a light and say, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That'd be great. No, many are going to be hanging on to their traditions. Many are going to be hanging on to, hey, well, what's wrong with me? That's where we're going to get right now. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? James 4, 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, all right. Now here's a great example. Do you drive a car? Oh well, yeah, I drive a car. Do you know what a speed limit is? Yeah, I can't go over. So if the sign says 55. What can you do? You get them. Say, listen, I, I drive 55. You know that. Nail them down. Say yes. Have you ever gone over the 55 when it says 55? And then you go to him that knows to do good. You know how you know what the sign says, and do with it not. You went 56, 57, 58, 60. To him it is sin. Ooh. So if you know to do good, so go through another cir circumstance. I don't know how old you're dealing with the person, but do you remember when you were young? Did your mother tell you not to touch those cookies or candy? Get a yeah. Did you? If you get another yeah, to him that to him that knows to do good, not to touch it, not to take it, and do with it not. You did. You touched it. To him and his sin. Oh, we got you on two sin. And you get it. Well, do you know, it? Is it okay to lie? Is it not okay to lie? Hopefully they'll say, well, it's not okay to lie. So you know it's wrong not to lie. And probably by now they're, they're catching on. Have you ever told a lie? A white lie? You ever called out from work and you weren't sick? You ever told somebody, about, you know, they call you on the phone. I don't want to talk to them. Tell them I'm busy. Well, yeah. To him. That do with it not. To him and the sin. So... Does, do they know to do good? Do they always do 100% to do good? No? Then you're a sinner. Well, this guy's... No. 
And you got to get them off other guys and other people and what they do. What they, got to get on him. That's why it's great to deal with just one person at a time. So you have failed somewhere on doing right and doing good. That's a sinner. And we've taken a simple, minute thing of stealing, of lying, of knowing what is right, and not doing it. And when you look at lies, stealing, Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, lie is a false witness, stealing, thou shalt not steal. That cookie that your mom told you not to take, thou shalt not steal. And you can run over to Exodus 20 if you need to. You mean to tell me that you have lied, you have not had a true report, you can run to Exodus 20, thou shalt not bear false witness. Now, i got to make a little side note here, and this is not a bunny trail. This is a true proven fact. If, by chance, that guy will not acknowledge he's a sinner, and I dealt with a guy Friday, Last Friday, he does not sin. You do not go any further. You do not proceed anywhere else. You find, give him a gospel track and go find somebody else. Because if they're not a sinner, they never sin, they will not ever sin. Then they can never be saved. Because you must be a sinner to be saved. You must be worthy of death by sin. To receive that free gift. And don't you dare go any further. I, I, mean, I mean, first try get them acknowledge one sin. But after a while, if you're beating a dead horse. Stop it. Don't waste any more time. We've come to the conclusion we are just a couple scriptures. Into dealing with somebody who has not come up with the proper answer about going to heaven. And if they have not come up with problem answer number two, number one, are you going to, how you know you're going to heaven? If it's not Jesus Christ, we got a problem, we got to deal with it. Number two problem, this is what sin is. Oh, I've never sinned, that's not me. Man, that's the wrong answer. And I'm sorry, there is no part B of that answer. If they cannot acknowledge their sin, and I, I, up to last Friday, I could say I have never had anybody ever tell me they never sinned. But now, thanks to last week, I dealt with a man that never sinned. And at that point, I said, get out of here. You're polluting my family. I'm not discussing with it. No longer. And he loudly, you know, oh, I'm polluting your family. Yeah, when you say you're not a sinner. That's it. It's done. Number one, are you going to heaven? Number two, are you a sinner? All right, so he acknowledges he's he, he's done, and I, he does not have, have to come out. You know, he's a sinner. You know, he's done wrong. He's guilty. So why does a man die? Romans six twenty three. Back there again. Romans six twenty three. And ask him. Say, hey, do you remember what we said? I hope you remember. If not, go back there. And say, yeah, you know what? A coronary, a stroke, a heart attack, a disease, getting hit by a bus, a volcano. <laughs> but what is the foundation of all men's death? The wages of sin is death. And because if you establish, and now you can go further, that he has lied, he has stole, he has not done right. And because of those things, sir or ma'am, you are worthy of death. You are a sinner. And sinners don't go to heaven by what they do. They go to heaven by the gift of God. And that gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life is through Jesus Christ alone. So death is caused by sin. Sin brings death. You're, you will die because you are a sinner. And being a sinner, you will die and say, Stanley, I know this. 
They don't. Man, it's like dealing with, with a toddler. You got to get grab their hands and help them walk. They cannot take those foot those those footsteps right away without hitting themselves on the floor. They need you. And along the way, I said everybody's different. Every circum circumstances is different, and you can't have a playbook. You can't say thus, 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 thus is going to happen. And you may have to know more scripture. You may have to know less scripture. So Romans 3.10. Romans 3.10. And I shy away from the Romans road. Now, I... I God has given me enough knowledge of the scriptures where I can go off the Romans road if I have to deal with somebody. But I have dealt with people, and this is where I, I and I could be wrong. I had been with people, worked with people. I, I don't know how to say it. It's the Romans road. But here, boom, here, boom, here, boom, here, boom, here. All right, say this prayer. Romans 3.10 As it is written So it's in the scriptures As it is written You find this in Psalms 14 1 and 3 There is none Righteous No not one Now, now you're really nailing him down You just made him a sinner Now you just called him unrighteous according to now listen, you read that with him, you follow your finger his finger or have him read it. It's in the Bible, it's not what you say, it's what the Bible says. And then you explain to him sin is not righteousness. You are falling short of going to heaven. Because there is none righteous. And even if you do things, whatever you do, there is none righteous. Oh, I've got a religion. Really? Is it made up of people? Yeah, there's none righteous. <laughs> you are trusting a bunch of sinners who are unrighteous who are going to die like you die or will die. We got to nail the sinner part. And again, at any point he denies. And you can't bring him back to the fact is that he's a sinner. You got to close the book. You got to get his name and pray for him. Because if he can't acknowledge being a sinner... There will be no salvation, and you'll get him to say all the prayers he wants to say to be happy and wonderful and, and lucky goes life, but it won't be salvation. First Peter 1 Peter 1.16. You're going off the Roman road. I told you I would. First Peter 1 Peter 1.16. Now here's a hard statement. And when you go to somebody like this, so do you agree that you, you are you have sin? You don't have to go out and say well, you're a sinner. No, you believe you sinned. You have not done everything right. Oh well, yeah. Do you believe that you, when you stand before God that you do not have righteousness? First Peter one sixteen. Well, God says because it is written again. Now look at it. It is written. It is written. It's in the scripture. Be holy, for I am holy. That's what God said, you tell him. God expects us to be holy. But aren't we sinners? Aren't we not righteous? So here's another question posed to him. There'll be a lot of questions. Are sinners holy? And if he says yes, good answer. 
you're dealing with somebody. You're moving on. He says no. Romans 3.10. Gotta know your scriptures. Romans 3.10. And a lot of times when you deal with lost people, it's pretty much in the same general area. The same general books. In Romans 3.10. Is it written as it is written? There is none righteous, no, not one. Holy means righteous. What did the scripture say about us? And include yourself. There was a time when you were lost, as this guy's lost. You're saved by the blood, but when you were lost, there is none righteous. No, not one. So, can sinners be holy? Hopefully you got the yes by now. And you may have to show them well, what is really the difference between holy and unholy. Or maybe we can fall back now in Romans 3.23. Well, I guess I'm not holy. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned. That's what he tells you. Say, listen, I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. I am leading you the same way how I got saved. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a sinner. And God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the gospel, I can confess my sin and be washed. But I'm still a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. And you're a sinner. You've sinned. You said you've done wrong. You have not done what God expects you to do. You've broken the law. All have sinned. That's you and me. You're, and then you would say, you know what? You were born of the sins of your mother. Your mother did wrong. Wonderful woman as she could be. Wonderful person as your father could be. But they were sinners and they gave birth to a little sinner. And your grandparents. I don't know what their grandparents were like, but they were born in sin. And they gave birth to sinners as your parents. And your parents gave birth to you as a sinner for all sin. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. We were born in the condition of sin, and we're going to die because the wages of sin is death. And guess what? We're going to born to be dead. We get born to die. And hopefully that would be simpleness for him to see. But we're not even done with the verse. We have all sinned. Sir? Do you think every driver goes over the speed limit? No, not all? Okay. Do you think there has been drivers who's parked where they're not supposed to park, you know, the fire lane at the grocery store? Do you think maybe they parked here sometime? Do you think maybe they parked in a parking spot they weren't supposed to park, maybe a handicapped parking spot? Do you think maybe they drove in the wrong lane, the left lane, the travel lane? That's that's only for school people passing. Do you think maybe that they didn't use their turn signal to turn? Do you think maybe they crawled through a red light to make a right hand turn on red? Do you think that maybe they went accidentally through a red light even though it was yellow and it did turn to red? Do you think, you know? You think every child would have the possibility to not do what their parents told them to do and go shy from that and knowing what is what is right to do and don't do it? Would you agree that everybody are sinners? Well, everyone's going to die. Sin makes funeral homes and cemeteries rich. You got them thinking. Let's finish the verse. For all have sinned. And if he agrees with you, keep going. And come short of the glory of God. For all sin. We come up short, though. And to tell you which means we're not going to heaven. The ladder's too short. And man in his works is not the ladder that God wants you to get to heaven. 
Religion is not that, that gap between you and God. What you do cannot, you will fall short. You say, okay, let's say by chance, let's say you gave up your entire life, you went to go live in a monastery, and you laid on a flat rug, you had water and oats, and you only had a pair of shorts, and you pray three times a, a third of the day, you read the scriptures a third of the day, and you meditated a third of the day. But are you not still a sinner? Have you been totally what Are your sins, the debt of sins, has it been cleansed? Is there any way to say, okay, you're not going to die because you're no longer a sinner? Can God say, okay, stop, you're not going to die. Because your sins are evolved. They're gone. And he must answer no. So, if being good, if being in a monastery still acknowledges you that you're going to die because monks will die, people who give to charity, people who belong to a church, people who are self-righteous are going to die, and they die, why? And hopefully they'll say because of sins. You got it. We are all sinners. We will die. In our death, we are not righteous. And we will come short. That is not a sound footing, a foundation to say you're going to heaven. Now, whatever that, remember that question? Are you going to heaven? Well, yeah, I'm going to heaven. How are you going to heaven? Anything but Jesus Christ. Well, Romans 6.23, again. You come up short, you're not going to heaven. In Romans 6.23, God has a gift for you. And do you like gifts? Would you receive a gift? You would? Well, here's one. For the gift of God, of God, here's a gift. Gifts are free. And the gift is called eternal life. No surprise. That gift is eternal life. And in the Bible, there is an afterlife after death. And the eternal life is through Jesus Christ. It is not by works. And it's not by mankind. It is through and only by Jesus Christ. And absolutely no other. So what I hope what we've got through now is that we found out first who we dealing with. Now last week I said we left off. He said he's going to heaven by Jesus Christ, testimony of Jesus Christ. All right, have a little fellowship with him and move on to somebody else who doesn't know Jesus Christ. You get somebody answers, well, by works, church, blah, 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 anything but Jesus Christ. Well, now we've moved them from works. We've moved them for the fact is, all right, by your works, you come short. By what you attend, you're not righteous. By you not doing right and knowing what is to be right, you have sinned. And you will die. And that gift, there is a gift before you die of God. It's eternal life by only Jesus Christ. And I'm sorry when I asked you if you're going to heaven. You did not tell me Jesus Christ. You told me church. You told me you were good. Whatever you told me. You did not give the answer to Jesus Christ. You did not tell me the gift of God. You started to say how well you were doing. And according to the scriptures, what we read so far, you're not doing too well, are you? Sir, man, as far as me, April 21st, 1987, I was in the same shoes you were. I thought I was okay. I grew up Roman Catholic. 
But a man opened up the Bible with me, showed me where I stood. I stood as a sinner. I stood condemned by God because I have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I did not put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I had my faith in other things that I came up short to. Now we're going to stop the lesson right here. And we're going to pick up again. We're going, we're going to move now from the guy who's a sinner. He's unrighteous. He's unholy. There's a gift. He must have that gift to get eternal life. Now next week, we'll, Lord willing, we'll, we'll pick up John 3.16. We'll move on what that gift is and what the results for receiving that gift or not receiving that gift. And yet again, please, please. If that person does not acknowledge they are a sinner or have sinned, do not go any further. Give them a gospel track. Uh, pray with him. And pray and pray and say, Lord God, I pray for this man's heart that he will see, that he will believe, that one day that he will have a need for you. A need that, you know, that he cannot do. Lord, show this man that he's a sinner. Help him today, Lord. Help him tomorrow. May he read this gospel track I'm giving to him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, may you be glory. Amen. Have a good day. It was nice speaking with you. That person over here. Hi. Can I ask you a question? Do you know where you're going to go when you die? Don't lead someone to Calvary and out the empty tomb if they don't even believe there was a need for the Calvary's for sinners. And they're not a sinner, don't bring them to Calvary. You know? Let's do it right. Let's make sure when we laid the ground for salvation for someone to receive Christ, we lay the perfect salvation, Jesus Christ. Better do it right than do it wrong, I guess. Maybe I'm too harsh. But I've seen a lot of people, and I know a lot of people, they said this prayer. And according to James, when I look at their life, I don't think so. I don't know so, but I don't think so. Please, get these videos out. Send them to your friends. Listen to them. Read them. Get your heart in there. Get our ministry name out. Pray for us. Help us with your prayers. Help us by getting these videos out. They do no good sitting on the internet and no one clicking them. Comment. Like. Go out and witness. Go in all the world and preach the gospel.